Do you want your DocuSign fields to hide or display certain fields based on your signer's previous answers in your form? That's exactly what you're going to learn in this video. DocuSign's conditional logic feature allows you to display or hide certain fields based on conditions that you can easily set up in DocuSign in a few clicks. This helps you collect more accurate information in your forms and removes guesswork from your signers when they're completing the documents. For example, in this document, if I select yes, the next question becomes required, but if I select no, it disappears. I no longer need to answer that question. Now, let me show you how I've set this up in DocuSign. And if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Sofian Saudi, and I'm the founder of Solisan Consulting. Since 2019, we've helped thousands of companies automate document workflows with electronic signatures, templates, and integrations. So if you're just starting with DocuSign, I strongly suggest that you download our free DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet using the link just down below because it will help you understand how to automate all your documents and forms. And if you need an extra hand, don't hesitate to book an appointment with our document automation consultants using this link here. Now let's go back to setting up our DocuSign conditional logic. I'm going to assume that you've already know how to set up a template and send envelopes. So I'm starting at the step where we are going to add our fields on the document. If you haven't sent an envelope before, you should watch our tutorials on how to build templates and use DocuSign in general. But before we touch anything, let's just first understand what conditional logic is and how it works. So to make the conditional logic work, you need two things in your templates. You need a trigger and then you need an action. By default, when you add your fields to your documents in DocuSign, they are visible. So what we need to do is to tell DocuSign which fields should be visible only if another field is selected or filled out. I hope that makes sense. So here, let me remove all these fields so that you can see me building the process from start to finish. So for this first question here, I'm going to add radio buttons for my trigger fields since my recipient should select yes or no. If they could select both options, yes and no, I would use a checkbox group instead, but that's not what's happening here. Now, once I've added my field, I'm going to rename the group label and call this maybe question one. So that's the group label. And now I'm going to rename my radio button values. So the first radio button is yes and the second no. You'll understand why this is very important later. Now, step number two, once I've added my trigger field is to add my action fields, which are also radio buttons here. Same thing, I'm going to give them a meaningful name. Now, our final step, which is step three, once I've added my trigger field and my action field is to set up the conditional rule. So I'm going to select my trigger field group first. The trigger is always first, remember. And then you go to conditional fields and you click on create rule. Here, I need to tell DocuSign which of the two radio button options should display my fields when clicked. That's why you need to give labels to your fields, particularly your triggers. Otherwise, it's very hard for you to tell which field is which. So I'm going to click on yes, because yes is the trigger. And I'm going to click on my action fields, which tells me that my rule was successfully added. So I'm going to click on done. Now to check that everything's working, I'm going to click on preview here. The next question becomes required. But if I select no, the next question is hidden. Now let me show you how to set up a more complex condition. If we go to this page of the document, this text box, should be visible and required only if any of the three preceding checkboxes grouped just right here is selected. But the signer is not required to select any of those three checkboxes, which is why they are checkboxes and not radio buttons. So if I try to set up the rule the same way that I showed you just before, let's see what happens. I'm going to click on my first trigger, create a rule, and then select that. If this checkbox is checked, I want this field to be required. Now, if I try to do the same thing on my second checkbox, see what happens. I cannot select the same field. This is because an action field can only be conditional based on one rule and not multiple rules. So here, what I need to do is a bit of work around using a formula field. Formula fields help you create more complex logic when you have situations like this where multiple conditions should be able to trigger the same field. So I'm going to remove the rule that I've initially set up just a second ago. And here I'm going to add a text field next to each of those checkbox options. The text fields are going to be optional, read only. I'm going to put a number one inside of them. I'm going to rename them and I'm going to change the font color to white so that my recipients can't see it, but the DocuSign formula will see them. 
I'm going to have one for each option. And of course, each of them need to have a different label. And then I'm going to make each text field conditional to the checkbox they are related to. So create rule, checked. This text field is conditional to that. Same thing for this guy. Next, I'm going to use a formula field. And this formula will calculate. And in my formula, I'm going to ask DocuSign to calculate the total of those three fields. Because if the total of these three fields is greater than zero, then it means that at least one of those checkboxes have been filled out, which means that then this text box should be selected. So let's do that. Now that I've set up my formula, I'm going to tell DocuSign that if my formula is true, which means it's a one when it's true and zero when it's not true, then I want DocuSign to display this field. And as you can see, the formula is working because whether I click on this checkbox or this checkbox or all of them, my text field is selected. But if I unselect all of them, then my text field is no longer required. Now, if you want to remove some of the text within the document itself, or maybe you want to remove signature blocks that are not required, you won't be able to do this in DocuSign alone. But I've got you covered because I've recorded a video showing how to display or hide conditional paragraphs within a document using a software called DocuPilot. But before we wrap up, I have a few tips that you must remember if you decide to start using DocuSign conditionals logic. So first, you can only set up conditional logic rules on fields assigned to the same recipient. So you can't force Peter to enter information in a text box if Sam has selected other checkbox. Second, and I cannot stress this enough, it's extremely important that you rename all your field labels as soon as you drag them on your documents, on your templates. Don't do it after, don't procrastinate on this because you're going to forget. This is because without having a meaningful label, it'll be very hard for you to understand and extract the data from DocuSign. Let's say that we want our investors' answers here to automatically synchronize in our database. The reason we'd want to do this is because getting the completed PDF is great for compliance, but it's not easy for us to work with the data because we're going to have to copy paste the PDF data into our database, which I'm sure if you're watching this channel means that you're like me, kind of allergic to this thing too. So I want to extract the field data my investors enter in my fields and whether they're investors or any signers doesn't matter, but I want all of that data to feed automatically in my database for me without me having to lift a finger so that I can use this for other purposes. Maybe the next investment, my investors will need to fill out the document again from scratch because I've already got all that data and I can pre-fill the document for them, which means they're going to send the documents in two seconds instead of 20 minutes. But you cannot do that if you don't rename your field because you don't know what the data relates to. I just went on a tangent here. That's the end of my story. But in the next video, I'll be showing you how to use DocuSign validation rules to prevent your signers from entering incorrect information in the fields. And if you need extra help with DocuSign support, a template or an integration built for you, our team of automation consultants has you covered. So if you need a hand, don't hesitate to book an appointment with us using the link just down below. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, happy signing. Ciao.